Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We now move on and look at movement by wings in the insect. And that is what we are calling flying. Flying in the insects. Flying is brought about by the action of wings. But these wings have muscles that we call the flight muscles. Remember the requirements for locomotion. There must be muscles. Equally, there are flight muscles which are attached onto the skeleton of the wing. They are attached onto the outer part of the skeleton and the wing. Now, these muscles are of two types. We have what we call the direct flight muscles and the indirect flight muscles. Muscles in insects attached to the skeleton and the wing bring about flight. But these muscles are of two types. The direct flight muscles and the indirect flight muscles. What is the difference? between the two. When we look at uh, our image, we are having a column showing direct flight muscles. We now look at it downwards. The direct flight muscles are attached directly onto the wing, particularly at the base of the wing. In other words, they bring about movement of the wings directly so that flight can take place. Why are we calling them direct flight? Because they are attached to the base of the wing directly in order to bring about direct flight. Then we have the indirect flight muscles. We now look at those um, images below the type of indirect flight muscles. Why are we calling them indirect? Because they bring about movement of the wing indirectly. In other words, they are not attached to the wings directly. So where do they attach? They attach to the roof of the thorax. The roof of the thorax is what you call the tagum of the thorax. Therefore, they attach onto the tagum, the roof of the thorax. So when they bring about movement of the roof or the tagum of the thorax, it equally brings about movement of the wings. In other words, the indirect flight muscles bring about movement of the wings indirectly. That is why we are calling them indirect flight muscles. I rewind. Flight is brought about by direct flight muscles and indirect flight muscles. What is the difference between the two? Direct flight muscles bring about flight directly because they bring about movement of the wings directly since they are attached directly on the base of the wings. When we look at those images, we see these muscles, called the elevator muscles and the depressor muscles, attached at the base of the wings directly. Hence the name direct flight muscles. Now we move to indirect. Indirect, they bring about movement of the wings indirectly. In other words, they are not attached to the wings directly. They are attached to the roof of the thorax, which we are calling the tagum. So they are attached to the tagum of the thorax. Now, that is where the wings are attached. So indirect flight muscles, when they bring about movement of the tagum or movement of the roof of the thorax, it is now movement of the roof of the thorax that brings about movement of the wings. Meaning the muscles don't move the wings directly. 
For them, they move the tagum or roof of the thorax, which in turn moves the wing. Hence the term indirect flight muscles. That is why we say direct flight muscles attached to the base of the wing. To the base of the wing. The base of the wing. Base of the wing directly. For example, in the butterflies and the dragonflies. While indirect flight muscles, they are attached to the roof of the thorax, which we are calling the tagum, the roof of the thorax. So they are not attached to the wings. Hence the term indirect flight muscles. Hope we can now tell a difference between direct flight muscles and indirect flight muscles all right so from this we see that insects in bringing about flight we have the elevator muscles elevator muscles the ones which are appearing is that color orange is it orange in that orange color the elevator muscles can also be referred to as the vertical muscles then the depressor muscles, the ones which are appearing pink, can also be referred to as the longitudinal muscles. So those are the two sets of muscles, the elevator and depressor. They are also antagonistic. Antagonistic. Very, very interesting. Antagonistic. Meaning when one contracts, the other one relaxes. Alright, we move forward. We now look at flight using direct flight muscles. Remember direct muscles are attached to the base of the wing directly. Like I told you, the muscle which contracts plays the biggest role. Now, because we are looking at flight using direct flight muscles, these wings must be moved up and down, up and down up down up down so when they are moved up that is up stroke moved down down stroke up stroke down stroke up down hmm? up stroke down stroke so when we are talking about flight using direct flight muscles it occurs in two phases the up stroke and down stroke now what happens to bring about the up stroke during up stroke we see the wings are up. The, look at that column of direct flight muscles, those drawings. The f uh, that second, the middle drawing, we see that the elevator muscles contract. When the muscle contracts, it becomes bigger. It becomes eh, thicker. Therefore, during upper stroke, the elevator muscles contract while the depressor muscles relax. I repeat, elevator, elevate. To elevate is to move up, to depress down. The muscle playing the biggest role contracts. So if I want to elevate, to move up, which muscle contracts? Elevator. If I want to move down, which muscle contracts? Depressor. Therefore, during upstroke, the elevator muscles contract while the depressor muscles relax. This causes the wings to move upwards. As simple as that. During upstroke, the elevator muscles contract, the depressor muscles relax, and the wings move up. During downstroke, it is simply the opposite. Downstroke. Which muscle plays the biggest role to contract? Depressor. So, the opposite, depressor muscles contract. Elevator muscles now relax. Because they are antagonistic. This leads to downward movement of the wing. In summary, flight using direct flight muscles, it occurs in two strokes. The up stroke and downward stroke. During the upward stroke, elevator muscles contract. Depressor muscles relax, the wings move upwards. During the downstroke, the opposite, 
Depressor muscles contract, elevator muscles relax, and the wings move down. So this is continuous, enabling the wings to move up and down. So that is about direct flight muscles, bringing about a type of flight which we are calling direct flight. That is why we are calling it direct flight. We then move to indirect flight. Indirect flight. Now, indirect flight, just like we have seen, just like we have seen, indirect flight, the muscles are not attached directly to the wing. Where do they attach? To the roof, the tethum of the thorax. When we look at these images, we can see the vertical muscles also called the elevator muscles in pink. We can see the depressor muscles, also called longitudinal muscles in yellow. We can see the wings in blue. One image shows the wings up, another image wings down. Remember, this is now indirect flight muscles, whereby the muscles bring about movement of the tagum, which in turn moves the wings either up or down that is flight using indirect flight when we meet again we shall start from that very point of flight using indirect muscles we have seen direct flight where direct flight the muscles attached directly are attached directly to the bases of the wings, bringing about upstroke and downstroke. In the indirect flight, the muscles attach at the roof or at the tagum of the thorax, but not onto the wings. Therefore, when we meet again, we shall look at flight using indirect flight muscles. Please make sure you're very conversant with the direct flight like we have seen when we, by the time we meet again. I wish you the best. Remember, COVID is real. Remember to protect yourselves and everyone at home because we need all of you alive. COVID is real. Don't forget to put on your masks all the time have your masks on i wish you the best and uh, until we meet again next time